the Deutsch Joser algorithm considers itself with the same problem of Deutsch's algorithm of finding out if a function is constant or balanced. But instead, this algorithm is a general case that can accept any number of bits as input. Let's quickly revise constant and balanced functions. Constant functions always return the same value no matter the input. Here are the two constant functions, constant 0 and constant 1. Balanced functions return 0 for half the inputs and 1 for the other half of the inputs. Here is an example of a balanced function that takes in a bit string of length 3. As you can see, the function returns 0 for 4 of the inputs and 1 for the other 4 of the inputs. For a classical computer to solve this problem, it would need to query the function in the worst case 2 to the power of n minus 1 plus 1 times where n is the length of the bit string the function takes as input. This is because, in the worst case, we check half of the inputs and get the same output for all of them. When this happens, we need to check one more input to determine whether the function is constant or balanced. There are 2 to the n possible bit strings of length n, so 2 to the n minus 1 is half of the possible inputs. Therefore, we need to check half plus 1 so 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1 inputs in the worst case to be certain the function is constant or balanced. With a quantum computer, we only need one query of the function, just like Deutsch's algorithm, to determine whether the function is constant or balanced. Here is the circuit for the algorithm. This line here going through the circuit represents n qubits, and the Hadamard gates tensor n represent n Hadamard gates, each one being applied to one of the n qubits. Let's go through the algorithm. At psi sub 0, we have n zeros minus. Then at psi sub 1, we apply a Hadamard gate to each of the n zeros, giving us this state. Let's quickly derive an identity that we frequently use when applying Hadamards to a register of zeros. This gives us n plus states. If we expand them out, we get 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, tensored with 1 over root 2, 0 plus 1, and so on, n times. Let's try different values of n to figure out how we can represent this mathematically. If we have n equals 2, we have the plus state tensored with itself. Distributing the states gives us a state 1 over root 2 squared, 0, 0, plus 0, 1, plus 1, 0, plus 1, 1. We can represent the superposition states like this with a sum over all bit strings of length 2, x. Let's try n equals 3. With this, we have the plus state tensored with itself three times. Distributing gives us this state. We can once again represent the superposition states as a sum over all possible bit strings of length 3, x, resulting in this state. We can generalize this and say that if we apply a Hadamard to each of the n zeros, we get 1 over root 2 to the power of n times the sum over all bit strings of length n, x. This is a very important identity in quantum algorithms and is used in many algorithms. If you think about it, this makes sense. Since each qubit is in the plus state, it has an even chance of being 0 and 1. So every possible combination of zeros and ones will occur in the state and with equal probabilities. Going back to psi sub 1, we can now change this to our identity. Now at psi sub 2, we apply the oracle function. Since the function acts on each of the superposition states, we distribute it into the sum. Now, if you look at each of the superposition states in the sum, they are in the phase oracle form. Applying the function gives us the equation 1 over root 2 to the power of n times the sum over all bit strings of length n, negative 1 to the power of f of x, x minus. Let's omit the minus q bit from the equation, as it is not needed in the algorithm anymore. At psi sub 3, we once again apply a Hadamard to each of the q bits. What this means is that for every bit in the bit string x, we apply a Hadamard gate. You may be looking at this and thinking that we can use the formula we used before, but that one can only be used when the state is all zeros. The x state can be any combinations of zeros and ones.
Let's quickly figure out how we can represent this mathematically. For this, we can rewrite the Hadamard transform on an arbitrary bit xi as 1 over root 2, 0 plus negative 1 to the power of xi 1. Since if xi is 0, it becomes the plus state, and if xi is 1, it becomes the minus state. Let's try x being a bit string of length 3. This gives us this state. If we tensor the states together, we get this state. Let's quickly add the exponents of the negative ones. As you can see, whenever there is a 1 in the superposition state, that state is being multiplied by a negative 1 to the power of xi, where xi is the position of the 1. We can rewrite this as the dot product of x with the superposition state. Now we can combine this state as the sum over all z's that are bit strings of length 3, negative 1 to the power of x dot z, z. Generalizing, we get this identity, where applying a Hadamard to an arbitrary bit string of length n, x gives us 1 over root 2 to the power of n times the sum over all bit strings of length n, negative 1 to the power of x dot z, z. This is also a very important identity that is used in many quantum algorithms. With this, the qubits are now in this state. Let's now consider the amplitude of the all zero state. We find that it is 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum over all bit strings of length n negative 1 to the power of f of x plus x dotted with the all zeros. The x dotted with the all zeros becomes 0, so the state becomes this state. Now, if the function f is constant, then the value of f of x will be the same no matter the input. This means that if f of x is equal to 0, the amplitude of the state becomes 1 over 2 to the power of n times the sum over all x's 1. Evaluating the sum, there are 2 to the n possible combinations of zeros and 1s of length n, so the sum is 1 plus 1 plus 1 and so on, 2 to the power of n times. This gives us 1 over 2 to the power of n times 2 to the power of n, which equals 1. On the other hand, if f of x is equal to 1, we do the same thing, giving us negative 1. So if the function is constant, the amplitude of the all zero state is plus or minus 1. If the function is balanced, then half the inputs will result in 0, and the other half will result in 1. If we look at the sum, this means that there will be the same number of 1s being added to the same number of negative 1s. This means the sum will be evaluated to 0. So if the function is balanced, then the amplitude of the all zero state is 0. Now we measure the qubits. Before we saw that if the function is constant, then the amplitude of the all zero state is plus or minus 1. That means the probability of measuring the all zero state is 1. If the function is balanced, on the other hand, then the probability of measuring all zeros is 0. What this means is that if we measure all zeros, the function is constant. But if we measure anything else, the function is balanced. And we are done. We have determined if the function f is constant or balanced in a single query of the function. The key takeaway from this algorithm are these two identities. They will keep popping up again and again 